this lecture, we are going to go through some of the basic concepts of artificial intelligence in industry 4.0. So, at present, all of you must have heard about the hype of AI artificial intelligence and its use in the industries and everywhere else in fact. AI has become very attractive in the present times and it finds different applications in different different domains, industries inclusive. So, towards fulfilling the objectives of in industry 4.0, it is envisaged that artificial intelligence will play a big role. So, let us try to understand the basic concepts behind AI and how it can be used to improve the overall efficiency and address different challenging issues in uh, the industrial uh, sector. So, when we talk about artificial intelligence, what comes to our mind is it is some form of intelligence we are talking about an artificial form of it. You must have heard about different different things like a robot playing soccer, robo soccer, robot playing soccer. Then you must have heard about the driverless cars which has also become very popular in the last few years, the driverless cars. These are all examples of use of AI techniques to solve different challenging problems which otherwise are difficult to solve. But it is not just robot, uh, robot playing soccer, it is not just uh, the driverless cars where AI has found application. AI finds application in different different domains in for credit card fraud detection AI could be used, AI could be used for designing a computer which can play the game of chess and this is something that has happened since last few decades you know lot of work has happened a lot of you know people have uh, taken lot of interest in the applications of AI in games. So, these are all different examples where AI has found lot of interest. In the industries also for making the industrial processes much more efficient to solve different problems which manually was difficult to be solved, AI and different other applications have found interest in the industries. So, what is AI? Artificial intelligence. So, there are different different viewpoints of what AI is. So, it is quite broadly scoped and there are multiple definitions to describe what artificial intelligence is. As per one of the definitions by Patterson, AI is a branch of computer science that deals with the study and the creation of computer systems that exhibit some form of intelligence. So, we are talking about computer systems exhibiting some form of intelligence which is very similar to the natural intelligence of human beings. Right? So, striving to build systems which can try to intelligently think and behave like human beings is what one of the definitions of artificial intelligence says. Another viewpoint as I told you that there are many many different viewpoints of what AI is. Another viewpoint is how we can use how we can use the different computational models to improve the mental faculties of humans is what again AI can do. So, that is another scope of AI. So, like this there are different different viewpoints of what AI is. So, the latter, latter definition is basically proposed by Eugene Charniak and Drew McDermott. So, they are the ones who came up with the latter definition. So, we are talking about artificial which is man made and integrating with the intelligence which is basically the thinking power and together achieving a system 
the development of a system, an AI based system, artificial intelligence system, which is a creation of man made thinking power. So, in simplistic form, AI is a creation of software having intuitive decision making capability. So, remember one thing that AI systems are typically software based, but in industrial sector or many other domains, they, these software, these AI based software will have to work on some kind of hardware. So, you cannot basically leave hardware completely separated when you are talking about AI systems holistically. If you look at the origin of AI, AI in the recent times have found lot of popularity in our country and globally, but AI has been there since long. F starting from the 1950s, AI has been in existence. Then in you know earlier there used to be different theoretical research works on AI. There have been different languages that have been proposed for use with AI like Lisp, Prolog, etcetera. Then you know in the 1970s the concept of expert systems came into being. Expert systems are basically the ones where based on certain pre existing knowledge the systems are going to perform better in the future. So, expert systems came into being. Then in the 1990s somewhere in the middle middle of 1990s if you recall the deep blue became very popular. IBM came up with their computer the deep blue which is a AI based system which can play chess. So, if you recall you know its history now that deep blue basically defeated one of the greatest chess players long time back. So, the computer so th that was when an artificial system was able to supersede the brain of a human being and an expert brain an expert chess player was defeated by deep blue in 1990s and that is when the applications of AI became popular in the domain of games and chess particularly. So, so what is the difference between a program which uses AI and which does not. So, a computer program without AI uses large databases and uses algorithmic search method whereas, a computer program with AI uses large knowledge base and heuristic search method. So, it is algorithmic search versus heuristic search method. Algorithmic search basically follows certain well defined procedures in order to come up with some optimized solution. Whereas, heuristic search as this name suggests, heuristic search is popular in AI, because many of these AI based problems are not easy to solve. The search space is huge, the search space in AI many of the AI problems is huge. So, where you know you cannot come up with some efficient solution using the traditional methods of search like the algorithmic search methods. So, heuristic search basically talks about heuristics or rules of thumb being used to come up with certain solutions which will be good enough to solve certain problems at a certain point of time. So, these are the heuristic search methods, heuristic search methods are quite popular search methods in the domain of AI. And heuristic search methods have found lot of use in the applications of AI, applications of AI in games, in different different games, chess inclusive. So, actually what happens is why the you know AI uh, uh, is uh, uh, you know uh, why, why uh, the search methods, heuristic search methods are uh, very popular in AI is because think about computer games, think about chess, the game of chess etcetera. So, sometimes the input space is so broad and if you do not use you know you cannot use the traditional search methods right. So, you have to use some heuristic methods to come up with certain solutions which will perform superior at certain point of time under certain conditions. So, heuristic search methods are quite popular in AI and AI for games. So, AI is heavily based on the concept of knowledge. 
So, we are talking about data, data you know several pieces of data can lead to information and then information can build help in building knowledge. So, knowledge is that information that can be used to perform a particular task. So, there are different different forms of knowledge particularly in the context of AI. There is procedural or operational knowledge which basically talks about the procedures that will have to be adopted in order to the knowledge about certain procedures that will have to be adopted in order to come up with a, a, you know a, or solve a particular problem. So, for example, a quadratic expression or quadratic equation rather you know. So, the procedures that will have to be followed in order to solve it that is procedural knowledge. Declarative or relational knowledge this is also known as descriptive knowledge. So, here basically we are talking about the knowledge the description of a certain thing an object an event or something alike the knowledge about it storing such kind of knowledge is important. And that kind of knowledge will be used whether it is procedural declarative or heuristic that kind of knowledge is going to be used to make the next move or to improve the processes in the industries the way things are happening based on certain existing knowledge you can try to improve upon the processes in the future and so on. So, that is where this concept of knowledge and AI and etcetera comes in applicable in the context of industries and industrial processes. Heuristic knowledge is basically you know these different heuristics that will or the rules of thumb that will have to be used in order to address certain problems certain challenges at different points of time that is heuristic knowledge. Now, let us talk about the scope of AI. Artificial intelligence has found use in different different diverse fields. In games we have already talked about in chess game in uh, soccer games in uh, different other games right AI has found applications in theorem proving in NLP NLP is basically natural language processing. So, AI in NLP means what that you are trying to come up with some rules etcetera which can make the computer understand not the computer's language, but the way the natural languages like English, French etcetera with which with which humans are conversant to communicate with one another. So, that is NLP. Then AI has also found use in vision, computer vision, speech processing etcetera. Computer vision is basically trying to enable a computer to see around, to see around to feel what is around it and so on. Speech processing on the other hand is enabling a computer to understand the way humans speak, what the humans are speaking not just the text but the speech of the human beings can be understood typically in real time or you know may not be real time as well. The, so, if you are speaking in English the speech processing would help help the computers to understand what the humans are talking about in their own language right. Then comes robotics AI in robotics you know robot performing different actions you know robot making different moves in a particular terrain performing different moves taking different trajectories etcetera. So, in AI in robotics is very important and in expert systems building expert systems which are basically in knowledge intensive systems based on the knowledge base that is resident in these systems. These systems can provide expert advice expert advice to users about what should be done next or what should be done in the future. So, artificial intelligence is very important it has become very popular artificial intelligence ML machine learning deep learning these things have become very popular in the recent years. So, artificial intelligence ML DL etcetera these are linked to each other you know all the people are talking about machine learning deep learning artificial intelligence, but there is a you know there is a linkage and this is this figure in front of you shows you know what is the scope of each of these. 
So, basically deep learning is a branch of machine learning. Machine learning or deep learning are basically branches of artificial intelligence, but then there in artificial intelligence beyond learning there are different different issues, issues of search, classification, these that etc. So, many, there are a lot of lot of different issues are there beyond learning in AI. Right? So, this is how these three uh, you know uh, uh, recently uh, popular um, technologies have become uh, or what is what is what is their scope. So, that is what is defined. So, what is machine learning? So, machine learning is a part of AI which empowers the machines to make decisions based on their experience rather than being explicitly pro programmed. So, so, you know so, in the computer basic computer programming or fundamental computer courses in any B tech program or whatever, what the students are taught typically is to make to, to explicitly program certain steps which the computer are going to take in order to solve a problem. So, these are explicitly stated. In machine learning, we are talking about some kind of a software or a program which based on the experience, previous experience, past experience will take actions, better actions in the future. So, with time better and better actions based on the past experience will be taken. Deep learning basically is a subset of machine learning which can learn automatically by finding the features of the object on its own. So, what what is you know so deep learning is basically where some deep computational structures are used to come up with some efficient algorithms which can do certain things much more efficiently with greater greater accuracy efficiency in terms of accuracy typically. So, better accuracy in a better manner will be done things will be done by deep learning. So, it is not like you know deep learning is the only solution deep learning has its own application domains. There are other non deep learning the traditional machine learning schemes which are also advantageous in certain contexts. It is not that deep learning is the solution in machine learning it is not like that right. So, you can use deep learning or non deep learning methods to solve certain learning problems depending on the certain requirements that are there. Now, let me talk about an interesting thing. So, we need to understand we need to understand the you know the difference difference between the different AI techniques. So, let us say we are talking about AI right. So, AI we have talked about machine learning. There is also something called symbolic learning symbolic learning. So, whereas, machine learning is based on on data symbolic learning is symbol based symbolic learning is symbol based. So, applications of this thing good applications would be in pattern recognition, machine learning has lot of applications in pattern recognition, data mining, data mining and here symbolic learning has lot of applications in for example, image processing, image processing. So, symbolic learning basically we are talking about applications in computer vision, then robotics and this can be machine learning can be of different types. We have already talked about deep learning, but it could be also the traditional statistical learning. So, statistical learning has applications in natural language processing, has applications in speech recognition etcetera. Deep learning can be of different types, convolutional neural network is one, 
recurrent neural networks is another. Each of these can be used to address again different problems of computer vision and also object recognition. So, this is basically the scope of artificial intelligence and the different forms of not the scope of artificial intelligence entirely, but in the context of learning um, you know how AI uh, is linked with the different learning methodologies like machine learning and symbolic learning. Let us now go back and talk about we have understood more or less the scope of AI the different applications of it the, its importance in the context of industries and different other application domains like games, computer vision, robotics etcetera. But let us now try to understand in little bit further depth, so that we would be able to realize that why AI is popular in building systems which can help, help achieve the objectives of industry 4.0. So, in industry 4.0 we have talked a lot in the previous lectures about industry 4.0 and its scope, but what is industry 4.0? In industry 4.0 we are talking about few things. First of all human machine interaction, this is very critical humans and machines interacting. We also in industry 4.0 we are also talking about in certain uh, cases machine to machine communication one machine directly talking to another machine without any human intervention, machine to machine communication. Cyber physical systems we have talked a lot in a previous lecture. Also associated technologies such as cloud computing, cognitive computing, IOT or IIOT, all of these can help in making manufacturing processes, sorry, manufacturing processes better. So, that is industry 4.0. Now, um, smart factory, smart factory is another one which is talked a lot in the context of industry 4.0, smart factory. So, basically this smart factory what it does is these factory machines in the factories, the physical objects that are there in the factory which interact with one another the virtual instances of them would be created and those virtual instances would be made to talk to one another. So, basically you know this physical world and the virtual world instantiation of the physical into the virtual space and making the physical objects and consequently the virtual ones talk to one another is what is done in the context of smart factories in industry 4.0. So, obviously things like machine learning sorry uh, machine safety, efficient products life cycle, efficient manufacturing processes, these could be achieved with the help of AI and these are required for making smart factories which in turn will help achieve in building uh, industry 4.0 compliant industries. So, um, IIoT, IoT in general and industrial IoT these are the ones which essentially will help achieve the objectives of industry 4.0. AI, AI can be used in along with IoT, along with IIoT and also to transform these systems into efficient systems, IoT systems and IIoT systems efficient using AI. So, basically you know use of AI helps the machines and equipments to communicate and relay information with one another. And this thing can be used in different different industry sectors, finance, retail, healthcare, agriculture and you name it and it, it is possible to use AI in order to help these machines and these equipments communicate and relay information with one another much more efficiently. So, for this specifically you could use 
computer vision, robotics, NLP, ML, DL, RL, all of these things that we have talked about so far, you could use them. So, with the help of AI in industries, in the industries are capable of taking the advantage of large amount of data that is generated by the machines to do something better. So, one aspect is to improve upon the communication automation relay etcetera etcetera using AI. The other one is that once you have used IOT and IIOT etcetera in the industries, what is happening is the sensors actuators etcetera from these IOT devices are going to throw in lot of data. So, that data will have to be analyzed and one can take advantage of the past data, the experience that is generated from this previous historical data to make things much more efficient, to make processes efficient in the future. Examples would be for prediction of yield, quality of yield, prediction of the quality of yield etcetera in manufacturing. So, these are different examples of use of AI, AI for improving the automation, communication, relay of information etcetera and for improving the prediction processes in terms of quantity of yield, quality of yield etcetera in the manufacturing industries. So, there are different challenges of AI in IIoT, connecting different devices, understanding the data, training the data, making it actionable, making the machines or whatever actionable, these are all different challenges of use of AI in IIoT. So, I do not need to explain each of these, but the only thing that I would like to highlight is the training. Training is very important because you know, so you are using past data which you will be using to train the machines to do something better in the future. That is one type of learning in fact in AI, that is one type of learning right. So, there are different different types of learning, this is one type of learning that using the training data set you try to do things better in the future. So, there are different advantages of AI in IIoT. The usefulness of AI in the industry scale are to increase the efficiency, save costs, improve security, augment performance and boost up resources in the industries, resources of all kind as I said in a previous context, in a previous lecture before. So, boosting up all kinds of resources, all kinds of uh, you know tangible, non-tangible human resources and so on. So, all kinds of resources could be boosted up with the help of use of AI in the industrial scale. So, AI has found use in different industries, in the agriculture industry AI could be use, used for crop and soil monitoring, for precision agriculture. Precision agriculture means like you know coming up with precise predictions about certain things, precise predictions about certain things. For example, when it is you know when do you need in the agricultural field, when do you need precisely to irrigate the field, to put fertilizers in the field and exactly the area where the fertilizers will have to be applied. What fertilizers exactly would be required? Not that you know you put in any kind of fertilizer it will be. So, all these predictions, precisions etcetera in agriculture could be achieved with the help of use of AI. Supply chain efficiency also can be improved in supply chain in the context of agriculture and food could also be made much more efficient with the help of AI. So, that is the AI in agriculture, AI could be used in education industry to improve the student retention rate for making interesting study programs and for providing immersive technology into the classroom. So, already there are different existing systems which use AI in the education uh, sector. So, for example, the smart learning systems by Carnegie Learning. Uh, then uh, Querium Corporation AI based education system like this there are many many different types of AI based systems in education sector that are available for use. So, uh, in the manufacturing uh, sector uh, manufacturing industries AI could be used to improve machines power consumption, detection of machinery fault, maintaining product supply by predicting consumer demand. So, these are the different uh, you know applications of AI in manufacturing. AI in the aerospace industry extracting useful data from everyday flight, improving productivity of manufacturing processes. All these top uh, you know aircraft manufacturers like Boeing, Air, uh, Airbus etcetera, they use AI heavily in their processes. So, in the case of 
rail transportation or automotive transportation etc AI is also used self driving car is something that I mentioned at the outset like this assisting uh, drivers to prevent accidents. Uh, these are all different applications, these are some of the different applications of use of AI in uh, transportation industry. So, um, one last thing before we get into the references, one last thing that I would like to highlight about machine learning is that machine learning can help do something else as well. So, if you are talking about something x, let us say some, some parameter advertisement let us say and let us say that this is the cell the y y axis right. So, you can have different data which could be plotted and then you can have some kind of a regression fitting or some correlation study etcetera etcetera. So, if you are talking about this kind of thing the humans are very good in doing things because it is a two dimensional thing and we know different different ways of curve fitting etcetera. So, handling you know correlation regression in two dimension think about the same problem if you are increasing the number of dimensions right. So, so if you are increasing the number of dimensions and doing something very similar using the human expertise and human eye, human intelligence, human brain that is difficult. So, the computers can do it and in fact, more specifically machine learning can help you achieve this different types of correlation curve fitting etcetera in multiple you know in, in, in spaces having multiple dimensions at the same time right. So, this is also another application of machine learning and how humans and you know, machines can perform better than humans uh, uh, in these contexts. So, let us now uh, you know uh, go back and uh, look at these things. So, these are some of these references that are there. So, you know the references for AI, ML, DL etcetera it is huge these are some of the ones that if you are interested to know little bit more in deep in depth you could, uh, but mind you that uh, through this course you cannot become an expert of artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence are you know courses semester long courses uh, themselves and uh, you know all you need to do in this course is just to get yourself exposed to the different concepts and which is what I have done. But then if you need to actually implement AI based techniques to solve certain problems you have to take separate semester long courses in AI, ML, DL etcetera. So, with this we come to an end and uh, uh, so thank you.